Indiana football got the relative of a very uh, famous person to commit on Wednesday. We'll talk about that. We'll look at Doc Rivers, NBA coach, talking about the IU program and then start uh, more recaps on the women's basketball team and the departing seniors all in today's episode. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, guys? It is Thursday, April 7th. This is Locked on Hoosiers, your daily one-stop shop for everything IU athletics, news, analysis, previews and recaps, all the Indiana sports. You're only uh, the only place that is giving you daily episodes on IU athletics. I'm your host, as always, Jacob Rude. want to thank you guys for stopping in and making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen every single day. Reminder, we're free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. We premiere the episodes there daily, 7 a.m. You guys can join in on the growing audience over there at YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, more odds, more lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. As always, guys, you can subscribe to Locked On Hoosiers wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Uh, also, follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Hoosiers. We're diving right into this episode because there's a lot to talk about before we start uh, doing some. Uh, discussion on the season recaps for the women's basketball team. Some wild, wild IU football news. Late on Wednesday night, uh, the 2022 running back slash quarterback, uh, Declan McMahon from Poly Prep uh, Country Day School in Brooklyn, that was a mouthful, committed to Indiana as a preferred walk-on. Tweeted it from his account Wednesday night. Now, for those of you listening, Declan McMahon uh, is, yes, indeed the grandson of Vince McMahon, uh, owner of WWE, and yes, is the son of Shane McMahon, uh, who used to have a position within the company. I believe he's actually been fired from the company. Uh, A bizarre... (laughs) Bizarre connection uh, to be made on Wednesday. Uh, the Hoosiers have a direct WWE connection. Some of you might have seen, it was about a week and a half, two weeks ago, Shane McMahon was in Bloomington, had the lanyard that said LEO on it. Um, I, I, I saw a picture of somebody uh, that somebody took with him at Buffalo Louis. Uh, was racking my brain to figure out why in the world Shane McMahon was in Bloomington. I searched. I found no connection. I just kind of assumed he knew a member of the coaching staff. Maybe he had come in to speak to the team. I didn't know. This makes it make a lot more sense. Uh, Again, though, what a wild storyline. Some of you might be more excited than others. I just hope Indiana football comes out to here comes the money at some point uh next season from based on his twitter declan mcmahon had offers from east carolina fordham had some interest from duke and rutgers as well it's a preferred walk on you i mean we're we're familiar with um the role preferred walk ons tend to have uh but last season iu had preferred walk ons taking snaps in the backfield by the end of the season, uh, Charlie Spiegel is probably a one of the more well-known ones around Indiana. Uh, one of uh, he may have the rushing record for high school in Indiana, but was absolutely dominant. Got a preferred walk-on to come to the Hoosiers. Uh, believe he took some snaps last season as well. But obviously, he's probably not going to have a big role with the team. But it is a, a funny, funny connection. Um, Wish him all the best. It would be a hilarious and awesome story. If he does turn out to be a 
contributor to this team, but perhaps it leads to Shane McMahon being around the program more, and I will be making those jokes all season long. Uh, that one is hilarious. It's going to lead to some great content. Turning the page to uh, some more news around IU. This one, actually, a former Hoosier, Michael Durr, um, he has heard from NC State, Arizona State, Boston College, Pitt, and UCF. Obviously, he was he announced he was transferring away from Bloomington. Um, I just thought it was interesting to see some of the names and schools he was linked to. He had an offer uh, out of high school from Pittsburgh, but none of the other programs uh, he had really any connection to. It, it seems certainly like Power 5 programs are interested in him, um, and if that's the case, certainly do not. Um, he he should have left to get to transfer somewhere because it may not have worked out here as he and Mike Woodson had envisioned, but hope it does work out at one of those stops for him. Future Hoosier, another one, Gabe Cups, uh, 2023 basketball recruit, uh, tweeted out that he would be in Indianapolis this weekend uh, with the with his Midwest basketball club AAU team. They are going to be at the Noblesville Fieldhouse um, on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, He'll be playing on Friday at 945 against Indiana Elite. Didn't, I don't believe there's any kind of big names on that one. Certainly not any names related to IU. Look that team up. Saturday, he'll be playing at 245 and 745 um, against Wildcat Select who I could not find any information about that team, and Compton Magic. Um, And then Sunday, he will wrap up uh, his time in Indianapolis very early. He'll play Dream Vision at 9.45 a.m. As I said, all of those those games will be in Noblesville. And... uh, I don't know what the attendance is. I know there are people going. I'm sure you can attend it. Uh, You can stream it. Um, He included a link to stream. I went and looked. You'll have to pay $15 to watch him play. If you're really interested, really have nothing to do on Friday, certainly you can do that. But um, for those that might be in the area, might have nothing else to do on the weekend, you can go head on over and watch a future Hoosier play. Last thing before we dive into these recaps, Doc Rivers, NBA head coach for the Sixers, uh, went out of his way on Tuesday to praise Mike Woodson uh, prior to the Sixers game in Indianapolis against the Pacers. He interrupted a one of the first questions. Uh, Quote, we're going to talk about Mike Woodson first and the job he did here in Indiana. It was phenomenal. Um, I followed them all year. It's funny. They lost all those close games in the middle of the season. And then down the stretch, they were good. They were tough. You could see Woody put that defense in first. Very happy for him. Getting to the tournament, obviously that one tournament game didn't turn out the way he wanted. But to get there your first year, it was a hell of an accomplishment for him. So clearly Doc Rivers was actually paying attention to high U basketball. So he gave a pretty good summary of the season there, struggling in the middle stages. It wasn't really until the tournament that we got things going, but it was late in the season uh, in the grand scheme of things. There are some connections between Doc Rivers, Mike Woodson, Bloomington. Uh, Mike Woodson was an assistant under Doc Rivers for a number of years when Rivers was the head coach for the Clippers in Los Angeles. That would seem to be the most obvious connection, but also Doc Rivers' son, Jeremiah Rivers, was is an IU alum, uh, played here early in the Tom Crean era, um, and so Doc is familiar with IU and Bloomington, so I wasn't expecting to hear Doc Rivers praise Indiana basketball, but there's a lot of things that happened in the last couple of days I did not expect with IU. Um, Vince McMahon's grandson committing to the program being chief amongst them. So a little bit of lighthearted fun news there to kick off this episode. Let's start talking some women's basketball. And we talked about head coach Terry Morin on Tuesday. Now we're going to focus on the players that are going to be departing the program. 
um, and what they were able to do for the team last season, what it's going to take for the Hoosiers to replace them as well. Uh, Terry Morin and her staff are going to have their hands full replacing Nicole Cardano, Hillary, Ali Patberg, Alexa Gouble, Grace Wagner. It's going to be tough, but uh, we're going to look back at how their seasons went, why they were able to help Indiana be so successful um, last year. Before that, though, our next partner has a product I use literally every day. I started taking Athletic Greens because I wanted better gut health. What is it? With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, uh, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. The special blend of ingredients Support your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. All those things they help you out with. Um, most importantly, I think, is that it costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than that coffee habit you have anyway. Skip that stop at Starbucks on the way to work and try out some Athletic Greens instead. You're getting all your supplements yourself. You're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance. And listen, you guys have heard about them. I've heard about them. We've all heard the the promos on podcasts like this one. They have 7,000 five-star reviews. They're recommended by professional athletes. They're trusted by leading health experts like Tim Ferriss, like Michael Gervais. Right now, guys, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That is it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash college. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash college to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Thank you guys for making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you guys get your podcasts. So the Hoosiers are certainly going to have their hands full, uh, replacing what will be departing them this offseason. Nicole Cardano, hillary Ali Patberg, Alexa Gouble, and Grace Wagner we should mention as well. Uh, Wagner had some spot minutes throughout the season, had a couple games where she stepped up and, um, had some helpful games and played roles in games, but ultimately was reduced to a bench role and very, very spot minutes when the Hoosiers were completely healthy. So a lot of our discussion is going to focus on those first three, but what Grace Wagner was definitely a, a part of this senior class as well. Uh, I mean, first off is just the familiarity these three have with the program, with college basketball. I looked it up. The last time Ali Patberg wasn't playing college basketball, Tyra Buss was a freshman on the Indiana Hoosiers and was not being coached by Terry Morin. So it has been a long, long time uh, since Ali Patberg just hasn't been a part of college basketball in Indiana. Obviously, all those years weren't with the Hoosiers, but I thought that was a little fun fact to look up. But ultimately, her and Nicole Cardano Hillary were what gave IU just kind of this loaded, talented backcourt. Um, the three of them were all able to play point guard, shooting guard, um, I guess technically small forward. It's obviously not not the same in women's basketball. It wasn't really a two guards and two forwards in the center for the Hoosiers, but the three of them were able to do each job so fluently that made it hard to game plan for the Hoosiers. If you tried to take one of them away, the other one would gladly step up. And speaking of stepping up, perhaps nobody stepped up more in McKenzie Holmes' absence than Goulbe, who um, took on a bigger scoring load, uh, took on um, a lot of those post touches, took on a lot of that dirty work that McKenzie Holmes had to do. There were there were moments of Hoosier struggled. There were times they got into foul trouble. Their depth at that position got incredibly thin, 
But if you're looking at one individual person, Goulbay probably took on the most in McKenzie Holmes' absence. But that's not to say the three of them didn't as a whole. Um, when Goulbay, or excuse me, when Holmes went down, the whole team kind of had to take a step up. And there were different ways they did that. We've talked a lot about Chloe Moore McNeil this season. We'll talk about her uh, in an upcoming preview. But she was a big one that stepped up. Um, Keandra Brown, when she was healthy, she got banged up late in the season. She stepped up big. But within that starting lineup, a lot of the um, kind of post attention went to Goulbe. Bay. They changed how they played a little bit, and Goulbe Bay uh, was more of an outside threat than Mackenzie Holmes was. But it was this trio together that um, really set the tone for what this Indiana team would do. Defensively, I mean, we hear a lot. We heard a lot all season. We saw all season. Uh, Cardano Hillary just being a pest. Uh, multiple teams at the Big Ten tournament called her a gnat. Um, I'm sure they called her a lot of other things during the game that we probably can't repeat here, but she kind of set a tone for this defense. It was incredible seeing her just, she has at least three lungs because in that Big Ten championship uh, tournament game, that Big Ten tournament championship game. Uh, let me let me try to say that ten times fast. She's still running around. She's still defending Caitlin Clark. She was playing her fourth game in four days, where these starters played thirty five minutes and up per day per game. It was wild to see her capable of doing that. But she never ever slowed down. Took some of the toughest assignments all season long. She got she had success against Caitlin Clark multiple times and most in that championship game frustrated her had her angry baited her into some fouls and that kind of set the tone for the team. I do think Allie Patberg certainly went under the radar defensively. The way Nicole Cardano Hillary defended it was kind of not that she was doing anything intentionally but it was very obvious to see her defensively. She was going around, she was getting the steals, she was hustling around the court. She was aggravating people. Pat Berg was kind of more of a, a silent assassin, denying the ball, denying um, players from even getting shots up, um, defending without fouling, all those types of things that go under the radar a little bit more. Um, Pat Berg was right there defensively as well. And, and against those games against Caitlin Clark, she had her fair share of matchups in, uh, against her as well certainly wasn't a one-person thing when it came to the Hoosiers. So Pat Berg, I thought, was a little underrated as a defender all season. Really, it was this trio, they were what made IU so great in that they they provided kind of the perfect depth and talent to go alongside Grace Berger and Mackenzie Holmes. Um, those two were going to be your All-Americans, but the these three alongside them um, – I think the best way to kind of look at it is they were just as capable of doing the small things, doing the dirty work, doing the things that don't get you into headlines, into all American teams. They were just as capable and willing to do that as they were as scoring 20 points in a big 10 game. And they did it during various times this year. Each of them had big scoring outbursts at times this year in the big 10 tournament in the big 10 regular season in the NCAA tournament. Each of them, them stepped up at some point, but they were also just as willing to um, get into a stance defensively and make a stand and take on the hardest matchup. And that's what made this IU team so talented and so successful is just that blend of having so many players who were talented, but also willing to buy in and willing to do all the other things that go along that make teams successful. And that's what's going to make them really hard to replace is not just the talent level they played at, but their selflessness, their willingness to do whatever it took for the team. You, those players like that don't come around very often. And this trio is, it's going to be really hard to replace. They are very, very talented and leave very, very big holes for the Hoosiers moving forward. We'll look at ways they can try to replace them, what type of holes are going to be left, and the challenges that are that Indiana is going to face to replace them, no matter how hard they try. For that, betonline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. 
Find all of the latest sports developments, including this week's Masters Championship odds, podcasts, and reviews for all the different leagues this season. MLB opening day is today as well, so plenty of baseball to bet on. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. Head to the website today and use your mobile or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts. So, how does this Hoosier basketball program move on without them? Well, it's going to be hard. Um, there are two very big holes in the backcourt to start with, with Pat Bergen and Cardano Hillary departing. Um, if you read the tea leaves, is what I'll say. It certainly sounds like Sydney. Uh, we'll say Indiana is the front runner there. Parrish is the transfer from Oregon, who entered the portal from Fishers, Indiana. Uh, would certainly fill a lot of needs for the Hoosiers. She would start in the backcourt. She would provide them a shooting threat they didn't really have last season. We won't dive too deep into uh, her, though, because if she does announce, that'll be a podcast in itself. But um, it certainly seems like she could be a real possibility. And I think that is what the Hoosiers are going to need is to find a transfer like that, somebody who can step in and make an instant impact in the backcourt because those are really big holes Indiana is going to have to fill. It would be hard enough to fill um, either one of Cardano Hillary or Pat Berg leaving. Both of them is a lot, and that's a lot of catching up. You, got, you will have to have your guys or your girls, I should say, do. Uh, Chloe Moore McNeil is going to see a ton of playing time and probably will start depending on how transfers and rosters shake out and whatnot. Um, her kind of ascension into being a very quality role player was big this season and it's big moving forward. She could take some of those ball handling duties. We saw her do that this season, um, take some of that pressure off Grace Berger at times. Um, so she's going to have a much bigger role this season. There's other recruits. Indiana went pretty guard heavy in the recruiting class. Um, probably fully aware that Cardano Hillary and Pat Berg were done this season. So they knew they needed a lot of uh, pieces to fill in there. So um, I, I, that's going to be the biggest thing is replacing that backcourt because not to say that Ghoul Bay isn't equally hard to replace. That's one person you can kind of patch things together. Kendra Brown, um, the transfer from Providence, uh, the it, just having McKenzie Holmes uh, available, um, the the you can kind of patch together uh, the production to a certain extent with what Ghoul Bay, what you lose with Ghoul Bay. Um, that's a lot harder to do um, with two backcourt players especially with what they uh, what they did. And um, so I think that's going to be the bigger focus is trying to figure out uh, how, how you replace so much production from the backcourt. And um, there are certainly ways to do it. We mentioned some of the recruits are going to have to step up, hopefully. Um, some of the returning players are going to have to step up, but it's going to be a by committee approach because it is, you cannot replace what these ladies did last season, the last couple of seasons. Um, just not even in terms of like statistically what they did, just like we mentioned all the dirty work that they were willing to do. Nicole Cardano Hillary would fly around the court, die for loose balls, knock balls loose, fight for those offensive rebounds, fight for those defensive rebounds. Um, you got to replace all that. You got to find somebody uh, or some bodies maybe willing to do that. So new players are going to have to do that around Grace Berger and McKenzie Holmes too. Not to say that those ladies won't do that, but um, you need a lot of people doing those types of things. So it's going to be a challenge to replace this team. And while I think ultimately Indiana has talent to be able to do that, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bit of a learning curve early in the season just because you're losing so much about 
uh, I guess, kind of the identity of the team last season, that it's going to be tough early on to adjust to that for people to figure out new roles. And you would hope by Big Ten, uh, by the start of the Big Ten season, you have those things ironed out because certainly seems like it's going to be kind of an open race. Um, Maryland's down to just two returning starters from last year. Uh, I would say Iowa and Indiana are going to be your two front runners coming into this. So it the, your chance is there, but it's going to take a lot of adapting early in the season and people stepping up in ways that uh, – in, into roles, I should say, that they didn't have last season. So um, hats off to, the, to that trio, to that senior class, Grace Wagner included. Um, they're going to go down as the group that reshaped what – um, what Indiana women's basketball was. And I, I Grace Berger and Mackenzie Holmes are going to be celebrated this upcoming season as their final seasons in Bloomington. They should be. They're incredibly talented. But um, it was this trio that kind of solidified these last two seasons of Indiana basketball. So hats off to them. They leave some really big holes to fill that hopefully the Hoosiers will be able to fill uh, moving forward. Thanks again, guys, for making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen every day. We'll be back with you tomorrow with a special guest. Uh, Jared will be rejoining us to do this same type of podcast, but for the men's team, talk about the guys that are departing, um, Parker Stewart, Rob Finnessy, Michael Durr. We might touch a little bit on Race Thompson. Obviously, he hasn't made a decision yet, so it's kind of up in the air about how you address that subject. We'll kind of figure that out tomorrow, but be sure to come back tomorrow and listen to that. Now, make your second listen the Locked On NFL Draft podcast. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. Appreciate all the love you guys continue to show us. Be sure to go over to YouTube, subscribe over there. We're, uh, we're, we're getting tons and tons of traffic over there, and I want everybody to be involved in that conversation. Uh, Follow us on Twitter if you haven't already, at LO underscore Hoosiers. Most importantly, if you're listening to this, just subscribe to us real quick. Helps us out a ton. You guys don't miss any of the episodes that we upload. Uh, We've been known to do some special episodes depending on the breaking news. So be sure to subscribe to us so you don't miss anything. Leave a rating and review if you haven't already. Uh, Again, helps us out a ton as well. Most importantly, though, guys, want everybody to have a terrific Thursday. And LEO.